Welcome back everyone to another video around predator lore. What's up? This is Carlos here. I'm back to discuss a topic that I found very interesting within the Alien and Predator universe. If you saw the 2007 movie Aliens vs Predator Requiem, then you'll know it was a sequel to the 2004 movie directed by Paul Anderson which was called Aliens vs Predator. Now, the ending in AVP Requiem did leave us with some questions about where the story could go if there was a third movie. But what we got in the final version was not that exciting. Dallas, Ricky, Kelly and Molly would make their way through the hospital. When they reached the rooftop, Dallas would use the Predator's plasma pistol weapon to fend off some xenomorphs. They would eventually escape in a helicopter before a bomb blows up the town. But when they land, the weapon is recovered by a team of armed military men, and the final ending shows Colonel Stevens had acquired this weapon that belonged to the wolf predator. He meets Miss Utani and she says, The world isn't ready for this technology. Colonel Stevens responds with this, This isn't for our world, is it, Miss Utani? And with that simple dialogue, it was hinting that there would be some part of the story where they plan to use this technology on another world. According to the movie's co-writer and director Greg Strauss, this movie was supposed to have a much bigger ending scene. Over on the website gizmodo.com, there's an article from October 28th of 2010 that talks about this. It says that the third AVP movie would have made some connection to the first Alien movie in some way. Here's what the article says about the story. These quotes were taken from Greg Strauss in the article. The original ending for AVPR that we pitched them ended up on the Alien home world and actually going from the Predator gun that you see at the end. It was going to transition from that gun to a logo of a Wayland yutani spaceship that was heading to an alien planet. And then we were actually going to cut down to the surface of the alien planet and you were going to see a hunt going on. It was going to be a whole tribe of predators going against this creature that we called King Alien. It's this huge giant winged alien thing and that was going to be the lead-in to show that the fact that the Predator gun at the end of AVPR is the impetus of all the technological advancements that allowed humans to travel in space, which leads up to the alien timeline. If we consider the technological advancement this weapon had, it further led to more discoveries by humans. The Predator weapon recovered at the end of the movie was supposed to be what led humans to figure out space travel. That was the idea. They never got any of the equipment from the first Predators. It's the first time they ever received any intact working technology left over, so they could take that and reverse engineer, figure out what the power source was, all of those things, and in theory, that would enable that company, Will and Yutani, to make massive advancements in technology and dominate the space industry. That was the whole idea was to literally continue from Miss Yutani getting the gun and then cut to 50 years in the future and their spaceships now. We've made a quantum leap in space travel that was going to set up the ending which would then set up what AVP was going to be which would take place 100 years in the future. That was kind of the plan. By reverse engineering the technology within the Predator pistol, it led the way for humans to leap into space travel. The technology taken from that weapon was responsible for the tech scene in the Alien movies. The third AVP movie would have led to an epic war on the Xenomorph home world, full of aliens, predators and humans clashing on the planet that spawned the creature which was designed by H.R. Giger. But of course, either due to the ratings, the box office results of AVPR or some other reason, we never got to see this sequel. Something similar like this also occurred in the 2010 video game of Aliens vs Predator. During the Predator's ending, you can see Weyland Yutani has some devices hooked up to a Predator stone coffin within the burial chamber. 
it's possible that some portion of the predator's history was then transferred into that data pad. Then, in the ending of the Marine Campaign, the rookie, along with Tequila and Katya, are rescued. While they go into hypersleep aboard the ship, the two pilots are revealed to be working for another Mr. Wayland. The one he defeated on BG-386 was just another android. The pilots confirm the cargo that was picked up. They retrieved the data pad and a live specimen. As the data pad sends the information to Mr. Wayland, you can see it translating the text or symbols of the Yauchua language. The final scene shows Mr. Wayland acquiring the coordinates to the Xenomorph homeworld. This could have been continued in a sequel for the game, but it also never happened. And honestly, I think that's too bad, because we've seen these big wars in video games, comic books, and novels, but never really in a movie, at least in terms of a huge tribe of predators hunting tons of aliens along with a huge alien leader on the Xenomorph homeworld. That's something that was missing from the movies, and even the Predator films seem to always focus on one or a few Predator characters, but never on a larger group or a hunting party. I really hope they change this format in the future, because we do need an epic war on the Xenomorph homeworld with a lot of Predators. So that's it for the video. Let me know if you want to see a movie set on the alien homeworld with a massive war between all three species. I do think it's time for a change. That is, if they ever make another AVP film. Alright, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it and subscribe to see more content around the Alien and Predator universe. Thanks for watching, this is Acid Glow, and I'll see you on the next hunt. Everything we do here hangs by a threat, but the potential returns are vast. If Whalen Yutani can leverage the hunter's technology, we can monopolize human commerce. Every colony, every spacecraft, every weapon manufactured by me purchased from me. I have to possess the secrets of the burial chamber. If it holds what I suspect it must, it will secure Wayland yutani as the dominant force for progress and profit. The risk computer is the key to many things. I possess knowledge and experience spanning centuries, but I lack the single causal beat that defines me. In that instant, Charles Bishop Whalen saw them both for the first time. Two creatures, each of them perfect in their own way, each of them unimaginably valuable. At that moment, my ancestor, my predecessor, my template, he saw my future. A dying billionaire embarks on a voyage of discovery to a frozen wasteland. Experimental technology stores his memories. He knows his chances are slim. But it is not the cancer in his lungs that will bring him to his end. Charles Bishop Whalen's final moments are lost to me. Unlike everything else, they cannot be recovered. But they continue to define my existence.